Now we are up to BR7, and the seventh triangle in the bottom row is the absolute center. So we are in the center of the third side of triangles. So this is a modified block, like most of the English paper pieces triangles are. So I'm going to go to my book, and I have these already numbered because I did that at block prep. So I have, I also have my fabric labeled for direction, but it's non-directional fabric. I did not know my fabric when I did my block prep, so it's a lot easier to do it, the markings for directional and not need them than to need them and not have them. So we did, I did that to indicate if I had that problem. For assembly, I'm going to do this, I'm going to treat this line as a separation of two sections. So this section up here, I'm going to treat like one big block. And then between this line and this line, I'm going to treat this section as one big block. And then this to the tip, I'm going to treat like one block as well. So as I assemble these, I will get to the point where this is one unit, this is one unit, and this is a unit. For my basting, I'm going to baste these so the tags go in the more convenient direction. For these that have triangles that go up against each other, I will be basing the outside parts first, these little legs, and then the hypotenuse to make the tags go away. And the same with this. These, I'm going to do this outside one first, and then these inside ones so that the tags go out. This one, I'm going to do the angled sides, and then these two sides. i got to watch this where this fold is here because this is a hard point to find when you baste. These are the most tricky ones to baste. What I'm going to do for these is I'm going to make a cut in my fabric to about there, just before the, the paper, and then I, that slit will help me maneuver this, and I will then treat this like one side and this like another side. But you do need that cut there in order to make the basting correct. Whether you thread based or glue based, it doesn't matter. So these, the tag will go out with this side first. And this is my tip, which goes like this. So I'll work on the basting as I go to see how these tags are working. So right now I'm going to start up here with this 19, 21, 20, 16, 17, 18 unit that I have. So I begin assembly on this first top section. I've added 19 and 20 to number 21, and so this has been sewn together and is all one unit. Now I'm connecting 16, 17, and 18. 16 and 17 are together, and 18 I'm going to sew onto here. If you've noticed, I basted this one with the hypotenuse down first, then the legs, making the tags go up. These, I've basted the legs first, then the hypotenuse, making the tags go away from this seam because there's going to be another triangle right here. So I've done these one way and this one another. These I basted, like I said, out this on the outside first, and then these two. And this I've got the angled edges and then the top and the bottom. So I'm going to finish connecting this one to these, and then I'm going to connect these to the whole unit. So I've got this bottom section completed, and that's what it should look like. So now I'm going to go to the next section, which includes all of these pieces. And it, was, it will be from that line to this line. So I'm going to get basting. I'm going to assemble these three pieces here, right there, and, those, and then I'm going to attach these three together to form this bit. And then I will attach this and this and then connect them to the other three triangles. So I'm basting my second section. For these messed up weird shaped pieces, I notched the fabric just to the edge. I left about a sixteenth of an inch of fabric at the edge, and I, but I notched it here in this opening. And then I, I basted this side and this side. And then I did these inside 
sections and then I did this outside section last. These I did hypotenuse and then the legs. This one I did the legs and then the hypotenuse because I didn't want the tags interfering with this one. When you get to this one, I did the short sides here and then I did the long sides, but then I couldn't figure out which way it was supposed to go because I covered up my markings. So the large end is supposed to go in the middle. So just make sure that after you've basted this, you put it back with the large side in the center. So I will finish assemble or finish basting this one and I'll begin assembly. So I've assembled this center section of this second unit. I put these two together first and then added one at a time of these two. So, so now the next step is to take this and I'm going to add these next here and here. You get the idea. And then I'll add the triangles. And then I'll have this whole second unit made that I can attach to this first unit. So I've got the second section all completed. Now I'm going to attach this to my first section. So I've attached unit one to unit two, and I'm now on to the assembly of the last unit. So I got all my pieces basted for this last section. I've got these, I did the legs first and then the hypotenuse to keep the tags off of these, these tags that are already there. This one I did the, the hypotenuse and then the legs. And then I did this the way I did these so that these can nest into one another. This I did the outer section first and then the other two to put the tags going outside of the seams here. And then this one, I did these top two edges first and then the longer sides. So I'm going to assemble this unit here and then attach these and then finally attach the tip. So I've got these four pieces all assembled. And then I just got to put these two on each side and then attach the tip. So I've got the two sides on my point. And now I just got to add the point. So now I've completed the tip of my triangle and I just need to connect it to the rest and I'll be all done. And now I have a completed BR7 triangle.